Hello everyone, Berdik Dors here again and in today's episode we will start making the neck. Here you can see the blank, I already cut it to the width that I wanted and here you can see that I already sanded it and it's very straight. We can see, check the thickness here, it's around about 19.1 millimeter and this is the exact thickness that I want to work with and it's always depending on the thickness of the fretboard so you should check this also and here we're starting cutting the very basic shape of the neck it's a very rough cut so we don't have to be very precise here but as good as you cut the neck uh, as easy it's for the router bit to uh, route the neck and here you can see that I'm very very close to the lines so I'm making this job as a joke for the router bit so it doesn't have to suffer while removing the wood doing the rough cut of the neck we can start by uh, centering the template which in this case the strat template and start rotating until the end And after finishing grottering you can see the results, some burning marks but very clean job and we can uh, start removing the templates. If you want to see where, the, where I buy my templates from you can check the link down below in the description box. And here you can see my traditional truss row jig. I will remove this curved side and then I will put just a straight one because we are gonna work with double action truss road. So it's way more easier for the people that have fear against these things. Traditional trust road is always a, like a very hard job to do comparing to a normal trust road. By taking a closer look you can see the first uh, routering it's not more than three millimeter and then after finishing the whole channel you can check the depths with the thickness of your truss road and then we're gonna work now on the knot of the truss road by making a very simple jig just to keep it centered to the to our uh, center line of the neck you can see here what's what I mean with this uh, jig it's just holding the neck, clamp it down the table and then clamping down this small jig to keep my drill bit center to the channel, the thrust road channel because there is no wood obviously to keep the drill bit centered. And after finishing drilling we can put our thrust road and then check it if it's good fit here you can see how good the fit is, it's flash also to the surface from outside from the bottom of the neck and now moving on directly to the tuner's hole and we will draw as always as I saw in my previous videos I always draw a line to check that all the points of the tuners are centered to each other and just checking and measuring double to make sure that everything is fine.
and this is the result as you can see from both sides we don't have any problem any tear out and now moving on to our fretboard we will start by climbing this fretboard to an old neck because I don't have a bandsaw right now so I'm gonna use my uh, jigsaw jig just to cut it to a rough shape and then routering using the neck as a template here you can see my jig it's a jigsaw jig, so just holding a jigsaw to another old uh, bandsaw table and start cutting to rough shape after cutting I can remove this old neck and then start with centering the uh, fretboard to the neck and make sure that I have wood from all the sides but before start clamping this down and routering I have to make the bottom shape of the neck and making sure that I am 90 degree to my sander so just sanding this drawing the shape and then sanding it until I get the shape that I want now for having uh, an access to our adjustment for the knot of the truss road we have to drill some holes and then straighten them to get a very nice channel to be able to reach our uh, truss road knot Here I can check if I have access to my truss road node and it seems that there is no problem doing that. Now using alcohol I will start uh, cleaning under the fretboard where I'm gonna clamp it down because uh, maybe there is some oils from my hand by cutting and doing all the previous steps so I make sure that everything is clean cleaning also the fretboard the bottom of the fretboard before gluing it down to the neck and also taping the side of the neck which gonna make all the glue that gonna runs beside the neck very easy job to clean Now after applying all the wood glue I can start removing the center tape where I tape the truss road and then putting my fretboard centered as much as I can to be able to route it from all the sides after the wood glue is dry. Now after waiting 24 hours I can start removing all the clamps and start getting the neck ready to uh, start routering the fretboard and get it flush with the neck shape. Now by using the cutoff wood from the fretboard and the neck blank I can make sure that everything is 90 degree to my neck without having a problem from balancing the router.
Now I'm holding the scenic vapor to the table using a wood block and start sanding the bottom of the fretboard flush to the rest of it. Now after doing that we can start fretting the neck by making the slots of course and we can do that by centering our neck to my scale ruler which in this case 25.5 inch and here you can see my symbol Jake I made also a video you can go and check it how to make it it's it cost me like two dollars you can see my index pen here and uh, you can see how the so is 90 degree to the bottom and to the side of my jig and we can start now with making the slots Here you can see uh, another symbol jig that I made also which has an angle to it following the neck shape and this I um, will use uh, this I will use for making sure that my sanding uh, block which in this case 12 inch gonna be always straight to the center line of the neck so while start making the radius of the neck of the fingerboard we will stay in the center of our fretboard and here you can see the 12 inch radius using 120 grit sanding paper some people use 80 or 60 grit but I prefer to take more time than just going uh, very rough at the beginning so here I did some uh, marks using a white pencil and I will start now sanding until I get the radius correct and done. Now after radiusing the fretboard I can check that everything is okay by putting my sanding block radius over the fretboard without sanding paper and it's gonna it has to be very flush and saving some dust um, of the ebony for filling the sides of the frets later on and you're gonna see this in a minute. Here you can see that I'm using my uh, template, my neck template, just to move the dots and to mark them and then drawing an X to get the center of each uh, fret and start installing the dots and the side dots. I explained this also in a previous video with much more details. You can go and check them if you are interested in. Now for installing the side dots some people do it by eyes but I like to double measure every single dot and check the length between two frets and then put the half of it and center it. In this way I can make sure or I can be sure that everything gonna be 100% correct.
here you can see me using uh, a very tiny drill bit which is about two millimeter to trail the side dots and then install the dots inside them with putting a block I can make sure that I'm 90 degree to my fretboard and I can start now drilling Now here using Starbond super glue I can uh, start installing the dots. I will let also the link down below in the description box so you can go and check it and order yours uh, from this company. It's a great company make a different uh, super glue with different colors brown and black and it save a lot of time by avoiding mixing ebony dust and super glue. Now you can see me here sanding the dots and get them flashed to the fingerboard but just with using 240 grit sanding paper so I'm be sure that I'm not gonna remove anything from the thickness of the fingerboard itself. Here you can see me that I'm using uh, my sanding radius block to get 90 degree to the surface of my fingerboard to make the slots for the knot and after cutting that I can move on to get the final thickness of the headstock and for that I made the symbol jig which will help me to uh, just get it on the thickness that I want without having any problems. Now after getting the headstock to the final thickness which is 14.5 millimeter in this case I can move to do the shaping of the neck which is also I explained in previous videos so you can go and check them if you want and we'll start now with shaping.
after finishing the shaving of the neck after Now after finished shaving of the neck we can start with making the radius between the headstock and this nice transmission and we will start using my uh, Dremel just to get this radius completely fine and then sanded it and then we almost have finished everything and we can start installing the frets. Now working on the knot slot, I'm start just sanding it until it get a very nice fit with my bone. Uh, it's very important to get a nice fit. It has to be a little bit tight. Then you can move all the vibrations from the strings to the neck without having any problems. Here I'm measuring the length of the bone where I should cut it and then I can start holding it to something or clamp it down and then start cutting after cutting the bone I can uh, show you here how the bottom of my knot channel is curved and I should also do the same for the bone so it should be also curved to have 100% contact to my knot channel. Now after measuring the width of my zero fret, I can know that it's uh, 43 millimeter. I can hold uh, my ruler and then start making or opening the channels for the strings. Now by using a wet clean rag we will start uh, helping the pores of the wood to stand up and then doing a very light sanding using an 800 grit sanding paper over the fretboard because it's gonna be way more harder to do it after installing the frets so it makes ton of sense to do it now before installing the frets and get it clean 
and doing this several times two to three times and then we can start installing the frets last step uh, using a very fine file uh, just to send the end of the fret slot this will help to avoid having tearing out while replacing the frets please make sure to do it very lightly you don't have to go so hard on it now moving to my gold frets here you can see that I get almost the same radius that I'm using which is 12 inch in this case and we will start using my drill press to install the frets by cutting them to a, a very rough length and then we will cut the final length after installing the frets Now after installing all the frets, we will start typing the neck from all the sides to start applying super glue, which is in my case Starbond super glue. I will let also the link down below in the description box so you can go and check it and buy your own super glue from this link. This will help the frets to stay in their places. I like to do this before cutting the frets and not after. Some people doing this after cutting the frets, but I trust uh, that uh, doing this before cutting the frets will give you way more stable frets and this will stay for a long, long time. Now here I made this uh, symbol jig just using the file by clamping it down to my sending block radius and by this I get the benefit of getting the radius very flush to the top of my frets because most of sending blocks they have a very flat surface which is not good you can't get the 30 degree right by this way you're gonna get a very nice result. Now using this uh, LED light that I made, um, it's just a DIY LED light that I made it specifically for doing this job. I can check using a straight ruler that all the frets are straight 
and here you can see why doing a very nice and clean sanding to the fingerboard before installing the frets it's really worth it and uh, doing the extra job will save you a lot of time later Here I will do a very and super light sanding using 1000 grit sanding paper just using this straight aluminum block and you can see that it didn't remove anything from the crown of the frets just very slightly to the top and start routing now the end of the frets and then start polishing. Using these two sheets of stainless steel uh, protection for the fingerboard, you can start uh, using a steel wall just to start polishing the frets. Not the final polishing, but just this is the basic one. And you can get from steel wall by 00, zero to 30 and the most fine steel wall. Like you go from down up to 4.0 or 4A steel wall which is a very fine and then you're gonna get a very nice result with a very shiny surface and this rounding on the edges of the frets. Now I will show you the traditional way to fill this spaces under the frets but there is a way more easier uh, way to do it just by using this Torbond super glue which they sell it's a great super glue you can just buy a black or brown um, it's a very easy to use you don't have to mix this uh, sawdust or sanding dust and start mixing this with super glue and making sure that you have to do it very fast before everything is dry so just using a black super glue it's um, make the job a way more easier to do now cleaning the neck using alcohol again which to remove any uh, oil or anything on the fingerboard and using this symbol check that they made to hold the neck straight and uh, flat so I can uh, apply my true oil without having any problems uh, you can see me now start applying the true oil this as I said it's the second part of three parts of this build so it's gonna be as I said the previous part body and this is the neck part and the third part and the last one it's gonna be the assembly and installing all the hardwares.
Now after finishing or blowing several coats of crew oil, I can install my uh, water decal logo. You can go also and check the link down below in the description box and order your logo from. Applying the logo, it's uh, with several rules. First, don't apply your logo on a uh, raw wood. You have to apply it on a finish and you have to let it settle down on the water for uh, around about 10 minutes before putting it on to the uh, to wherever you want to put it you have to use a very sharp cutter to cut the sides uh, and then put some water to the surface where you want to put your logo on and then try to slide it very carefully it's a very thin material I mean like extremely thin just go slowly on it and then you're gonna be okay And after applying the logo, we do several coats of true oil again and wet sanding and then finishing the neck by putting a lemon oil on the fingerboard. And until this point you reach the end of this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like if you want to, if you dislike it, just dislike it. And I will catch you in the next time, which will be installing all the hardware and doing the assembly. This is a very exciting project. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, and I will see you in the next time. Peace.